Hello everyone, I am Dr. Richa from Physiology Open and in this video we are going to talk about how to approach practicals in physiology. So I have already covered how to approach theory in physiology, that video you can watch. Today we will talk about practicals. So when we talk about practicals, you will see different types of practicals in physiology. We will have hematology, we will have clinicals in which there will be system examination. We will have human practicals. So this even though it is called human, it is uh, clinical examination is also done on humans only. But this is the practicals or we can say investigations on uh, physiology. Then there is amphibian graphs and then there will be some charts, picture, calculation. So as you progress through the course, you will shift through various practicals depending on which college you are the way you will be doing will be different some colleges will complete hematology first some colleges uh, may have one batch with hematology second batch with the clinical examination or human experiments and in the next week you will have to switch so that doesn't matter basically you will cover all these aspects now, how important are all these aspects and what are the questions which we generally raise with ourselves when we are doing these practicals? So that we are going to discuss. So first one is hematology. Hematology, what happens that these are like, uh, we feel like we are doing some very primitive uh, experiments. So you will take out your own blood. First of all, yes, you have to take out your own blood. Some people are very scared that how to take out, but it is just a small prick. And then you will draw in blood and look for your own RBCs, look for your own WBCs, do your own bleeding time, clotting time. So some students ask me question that uh, why are they doing this in this era of automation where everything is automated do they really need to count RBCs manually so that is one thing second thing is that uh, they feel like they are doing a technician job they are here to become doctors and they are uh, doing a technician job but uh, I have a different point of view in that even some faculty feel that it is more of a technician thing I have a different point of view I feel that it gives you an awe of learning when you actually take out your blood and take uh, CRBCs under the microscope. So it is something very fascinating that yes, actually RBCs are present in the microscope. WBCs, when you stay in it and see it under the uh, microscope, you will see all WBCs. Then there is another one, differential leukocyte count, which is still done by the way, even though we have automated counters. But uh, in many labs, we still do manually with peripheral smear we are counting so that is another thing third thing is that uh, as a doctor you should know certain things about the procedure because when you are writing the investigations you will think about a particular disease and write certain investigations now suppose when the investigation results are there and you see okay these results are not the things which you expected you were thinking of some other disease and you were thinking of some other results but uh, this is mismatch then only when you know about the procedure you can think of okay maybe there are certain errors which might have happened okay so there are various perspective on that that is my perspective that this is not for making you a technician rather it is an awe of learning when you do on yourself yes some students get very scared when they prick themselves but you will get used to it it is a very small thing i would suggest don't prick yourself ask somebody because it is a matter of microseconds it is pricked and it will be done right so that is about hematology then we have a clinical that is examination which you will be doing later in life as well that is a clinical examination of the patients in this you will have various system examination like clinical examination of the cardiovascular system respiratory system so in this skill of doing is very important okay so suppose you are feeling the pulse right and uh, you should know first of all what is the method of feeling the pulse very important so listen to each and every instruction properly and follow properly then only it will be possible for you to learn the skill that is one thing Second thing is, this is a very strange thing that whether you are feeling the pulse that only you can know. I cannot know as a teacher. When you say that, yes, I feel the pulse, then I will believe you. 
similarly when you are hearing say suppose the kurotkov sounds then if you say that yes i am hearing five phases of kurotkov sounds and i am matching it then it is very difficult for me to check whether you have really understood the sounds okay there are various methods like suppose there is um stethoscopes with the double earpiece where one goes into the teacher and teacher's ear and the other goes into the student's ear but uh, it is not possible for the teacher for to check for every student that they are actually hearing the sound similarly for heart sounds when you hear them you only know that what do you hear and how the sound is you cannot uh, express it to the teacher isn't it so it is a perception now my point is that if you lie about it if you lie to your teacher that yes i can feel it that yes i can feel the pulse i can hear the sounds i can feel the intercostal spaces then they will actually believe you isn't it so in this clinical examination best way to learn is to tell truth to yourself that is what i tell to all my students in fact uh, once i got one student i need to tell that his story that he was not able to feel the brachial pulse and i had told her this before that you have to speak the truth to yourself and he heard that and uh, took it seriously and he kept on coming to me that he is not able to feel the brachial pulse he is not able to feel the brachial pulse then i made several attempts to make him feel and finally when he was able to do it he was able to learn the procedure correctly because of that and when he could feel it he was like extremely happy that is what i am talking about the awe of knowledge and later on he never made any mistake so if you lie to yourself then you are not going to learn it and then you are not going to learn it for life because same thing you are going to repeat in second year third year so for this especially clinical examination i would suggest always speak truth to yourself what you are hearing what you are doing how you are perceiving then only you will really learn this clinical examination then moving on to human practicals human practicals will include certain investigations like uh, spirometry will be there where you will actually find out the lung functions then uh, maybe some practicals you will not uh, use in later life as test as well for example mosozergography you will not use later but that certain experiments help you understand physiological phenomena better so that's why they are there it is not that everything you are going to do that you are going to apply in later life but for understanding of the phenomena also it is important that you do certain practicals okay then comes amphibian graphs now these graphs are obtained from frog or uh, sometimes in some uh, colleges there may be mammalian experiments as well okay so in this amphibian graphs these are obtained from the heart muscle and from the nerve muscle nowadays we don't uh, kill a frog for these experiments because uh, we find that uh, it is not that much necessary to kill a living being for learning this right so there are uh, simulated experiments also available so in certain colleges they may be available in certain colleges they may not be available but nothing to worry about it you have to actually little bit imagine in this case and obviously i say that the drive for learning if you have the drive for learning then you can understand them better otherwise what happens i see that many people don't understand that them well but they can actually write about that these charts because these amphibian graphs in exams they will be given as charts and you have to answer certain questions on it right so but i would suggest whenever you are doing anything you put your mind in that so that that moment you make it productive if that time you are wasting then later on when you try to learn on your own first of all because you have not listened in the class then later time when you are trying to learn on your own it becomes very difficult for the same thing you spend a lot more time on the other hand when it is being taught and you are active in listening then even when you study less later on on your own it will be much more productive okay and you will know that what to study so in this amphibian graphs the why and what of heart and nerve muscle will be taught to you and again you will learn the physiological basis of the functioning of heart and nerve muscle like the properties of the heart you will learn then next is the charts pictures calculations now this will help in applying what you have learnt in physiology 
then interpretation of the charts is there and some images may also be given for example some clinical images of for say gigantism acromegaly may be given and you will have to identify them so that is charts picture uh, calculation it helps you develop analytical and critical thinking skill now not only for first year these days all these things are asked in your neat pg exam as well so neat pg exam now no more is restricted to your theory part in fact whatever cells you see say suppose in hematology they can give you a picture and ask you for identification of the cell similarly for amphibian graphs also they are giving and uh, asking you certain calculations on that say suppose calculation of the tetanizing frequency similarly these uh, charts which are there they are giving you graphs directly taken from guyton and ganong book and then you have to actually interpret those graphs by the way i have made full physiology course from guyton and ganong content and that is available in the app you can download the app and the course is available in a very meager price so if you start studying your concepts from today itself then uh, you can uh, build your foundation from right now only okay so those were about the practicals now this is mainly what here i talked about it is practical doing but when we talk about practical it is not only performance it is a skill is there yes that you have to perform but there is other components as well that is interpretation of what you are doing so whatever values you are getting you need to interpret that uh, yes whether they are in normal range or in abnormal range that is one thing and if they are in abnormal range then why they are in abnormal range what can be the causes of that whether you have done something wrong in the experiment itself so there can be experimental causes there can be some physiological variations in which these uh, uh, values go up and down or they can be really some pathology so always think that whether you have done something wrong there can be experimental reasons physiological reasons and also pathological reasons so all this what you learn here you have to apply to your knowledge and make it a strong foundation from today itself okay so those were about the practicals now moving on to some very important critical aspects first is record book yes all of you will get one record book and this record book is for writing your observation mainly okay so whatever you do in a particular practical whatever readings you get neatly you have to write in the record book now this is very important this is actually a skill which you need to develop as a doctor because in life later on you will be seeing patients and everything what you observe what you examine everything you have to jot down your observations so why not practice from today itself how to write the readings what is the way to write suppose uh, you are taking blood pressure so you should know what is the norms of writing the blood pressure like systolic blood pressure bar diastolic blood pressure you have to write with the units that is millimeter mercury similarly if you are taking bp in uh, supine position you have to mention that so all these things you have to learn and report okay so that is record writing one thing so i would suggest that you do it immediately when you do the practical there second thing is that uh, your record book might be having certain questions so not all record books not uh, all colleges may have certain questions but uh, still some colleges give some question and you have to write the answer for that in your record book now what happens what i see is that many students just blindly copy from each other the answer but that is not a very good practice for you yes for the sake of completion you are doing it you will get the signature that is all fine but do you really think that uh, that will help you in your learning no see i always say that whatever time you are spending spend it productively anyways you will be writing the answer so even if you are looking at your friend's answer why not take some time for processing the answer and writing it in the record book in this way the time you are spending for writing the answer you are learning also during that time secondly that whatever mistakes one person has made that also are copied okay now it is very difficult to check each and every record book and find mistake everywhere do you think any faculty can actually spot all the mistakes in all the record books no okay so basically all the mistakes you uh, which are started from one person they just carry over throughout okay 
Now, can you use these questions to prepare for your viva? What you have written as answers? No, because you have just copied, you have not put the mind and I see many students actually answering in the viva that it was written in the record book. So I told like that. Well, you only wrote it, you only copied it, you only wrote it wrong. So why not read it somewhere? You try to understand the answer and then write because these questions, if your uh, college has given in the record book, that means these questions are very important questions for Viva, for your practical Viva. Okay, so that was about record book. Now coming on to which book do I recommend? Well, there are many well-known books, again, for uh, practical physiology also. There are Indian authors uh, for practical physiology. We have Indian authors book. But again, I would not recommend that. I would recommend some other book that is a book written by me only. Okay, so this is the book which I am talking about. This is the practical physiology book. Now, this book is very different from what other books have given. Here in this book, we have written it uh, like a checklist, all your procedures, step by step what you have to do and also given explanation that why you have to do that particular step. So it is not like uh, written in a paragraph. You will have checklist for each and every procedure. So for example, if you have to auscultate the breath sounds, then you will have a checklist to auscultate that covering each step. And we have also given marks for each step. Understanding. So to tell you that how important it is, even though if you miss a particular step, actually you are not doing the procedure correctly. But for the sake of simplification and for the sake of registration in your brain, that checklist is given. Second thing, the questions which we have given, we have arranged it in a very logical manner where you will learn everything about the practical in a why and how manner. So one, then based on the first answer, we will have the second question. Based on the second, we will have the third question. Like that, it progressively moves. Then it moves from uh, like facts to interpretation to the applications and then also to some clinical uh, questions wherever needed. So uh, this book uh, I recommend because I find it many students have uh, told me that they find this book uh, very um, easy to read and they are learning a lot. And more so over, there is nothing extra as such. We have made this book only for undergraduates. And because it is so targeted, we have not given much extra information. So you can get this book from Amazon or Flipkart or also from Paris Redcard. That is my publisher. And uh, there you will get uh, the book in much more discount. So you go and buy this book. So that was all about the practicals. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button. Do share the video with others. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.